Hi everyone, welcome to the design studio. So today we're gonna to be still trending for the month of June and creating everyday wreath designs. This is what this entire month is gonna be devoted to. And these are great wreaths that you can swap out in between all your seasonal and holiday wreaths. So we're really gonna focus in on things that we can put up year round. So the wreath design that we're making today is we're gonna be making the 2023 um, winery design. I usually make one every year and so this one is no different. We're going to be combining elements from previous designs that I've had um, and making a new fresh look for 2023. So if this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'd love to know where you're from and where you're joining us from. Um, also, if this is your first time, do me a favor and click like and then or like the page go over a couple, like a space, you'll find three little dots, click on that uh, three dots, and then you'll be able to um, follow the page. When you like and follow a Facebook group's page, when they go live and you're on your device, you should be notified that there is a new live going on. And so sometimes we break up the monotony and do something a little bit different. We might go on at a different time. So um, make sure you've done that. And um, if you like this design and want to replicate it once you have all of your supplies handy or do your own spin on it, just click the share button. It'll share this video to your Facebook page where it is so much easier to find the tutorial. Okay, I am going to pivot you down and we're gonna go through and get you guys started. So bear with me one minute. I always wanna make sure that you can see the full edge of the measurements so that when we're measuring things out, you guys could be following along. We're using a 14 inch Dollar Tree frame. And this year, besides the solid green, they have ones that they're not really gold. Um, it's kind of like a beige yellow, like a mustard yellow color. And so I'm gonna be using this on this design because it coordinates really, really well with the mesh that I'm using. And then we don't have to worry so much about trying to hide a darker frame under lighter mesh. So you'll find these at your Dollar Tree store. They're exactly the same. They have six sections. We're gonna go ahead and get this one wired up for you. Let me make sure I got comments so I can see where you guys are all at. Hi, Gail. Oh, backroom college orientation, graduation tomorrow night. Ugh. Welcome to the new chapter in your life. I'm super excited for you. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your pipe cleaner and you are going to go in between your um, first two inside uh, sections and you're just going to wire this together just like this. And then we're going to do the same to the outside too using the weld and this one. I'm gonna kind of find a halfway point here, just like so. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side, okay? And this will give us six on the inside, one in each section, and then two in each section on the outside for 12, grand total of 18. So this is what we're going to be doing. And if you were with me on Tuesday, we kind of did a little bit of a different mesh method, whereas like this one, we're doing a jute mesh. This is a natural and white combined. You can see the colors. This has to be cut with a rotary cutter because it has those natural fibers on the inside that will not cut with a wood burning tool. So rotary cutter on these 20 inch pieces. And what we're gonna do is, we are just going to kind of find a midway point. I like to follow the white line here. And what I do is I just kind of hold it in my hand and I just gather it together. And then I hand my right hand off to my left hand. So this is kind of called like a squishy, messy ruffle. And so this creates a less than uniform look. You know, like when we were doing it before, um, we had, you know, more precise. We had um, defined details. So let me show you what I mean. So if we were doing it this way, we were ruffling, you know, really precise. 
really controlled. And so we had a different look. So this one is kind of like more like, like little, um, like, I guess it'd be like ripples of water. And this one is more like just not thrown together, but it just creates a totally different look. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Going to gather to the center just like this. I'm always putting the finished edge to the outside or to the inside. You want to still make sure that you're centering those. And it just makes for a really big, bunchy, full wreath. More full. Um, the other method using the ruffles on a more controlled note, um, just make it a little bit more flat. And this one, I want a little bit more full. So see how you have that difference in the, the way it presents on the wreath. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this one in. Okay, so we've done two to the outside, one to the inside. I'm gonna always make sure that my inside pieces are going under the outside pieces because that's kind of like a filler between sections. So you can see how full that is and that's just one section of the wreath. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you the ribbon combinations and I'm gonna um, pair these with this design and I'm gonna show you what a mock-up looks like. So a mock-up is how do you determine uh, the best possible uh, look without really wasting a ton of materials. Well, let's say, for example, we knew with our sign we wanted to go more natural, a little bit more rustic flair for like a winery inspired wreath. So that's why I picked this particular mesh, but maybe I'm not so sure on the um, ribbons. So what you do is cut them at the longest length you think you'll need. So my inch and a half pieces are cut to 19 inches. My two and a half inch pieces are cut to 14 inches. Um, I think the majority of these all came from like the green and the Swiss dot was from a uh, craft outlet. Um, the winery ribbon came from personally yours. Um, she's at PLY wreath. It's PLY .com, I think. Um, so they're really hard to find because they've kind of changed the look of this a little bit. Um, they just don't have like the beige color or sometimes even the white color behind it. So um, I don't know if they're discontinuing that or what the, the deal is, but these are really, really hard to find. And actually, now that I notice, look, this was, I was, while I'm sitting here looking at this, I'm like, well, this, this pattern doesn't really go good together because um, you have a leaf and a leaf here. And then I flip it over and this is actually a very well done um, what do I call it? Splice. So I'm going to go ahead and recut this one before I use it. So I'm just going to roll this out 19 inches. Hate when that happens, especially when we spend, you know, a lot of money to make sure that we have good quality products. Like this ribbon is not inexpensive by any means. So I'm just doing a double um, dovetail on both ends so I don't have to do one end and then the other. This one will kind of set aside. So let's go ahead and add these. So I'm going to take the two and a half inch. That's going to go down first. I'm going to place these in the outside piece. Okay just like that. And then we're going to use the green. It's like a moss green or sage green Swiss dot. So I'm going to go up about two inches. I'm going to pinch those in. So literally it's two inches. I'm going to place the green on the winery color. Give it a couple twists. I'm going to open that up. And then I have to right side one side of my ribbon. And then we're gonna do the same for the other. And I do this almost with every single design, especially if I'm not sure that these are the colors that I would like to see for this particular design. 
So we're going to go ahead and put them both in. Fan that out. Do the same here. Go up. I'm going to place that right inside my pipe cleaner. Give it a couple twists. And if you're a new wreath maker, leave your pipe cleaners on until the very end. Because in case you decide to change your mind or you want to add some sort of an embellishment and you need a way to secure your embellishment, leaving your pipe cleaners on to the very, very end um, and then deciding, hey, I don't need those. I need to take them off. Um, that is a really solid tip. So this is what I call a mock-up. So my private group has learned how to do this. And what this does is prevents you from cutting into an entire roll of ribbon to find out that your ribbon colors are not along the lines of what you want. Then what you do is you take your sign, and we're gonna be modifying this sign a bit. So this is our um, corrugated metal uh, welcome sign, and you can just lay that next to your design and see do you kind of have a good look going for what you're trying to achieve. Now what I said is we're gonna modify this sign. So really quickly, the sign is from the reshop. So the welcome is actually attached to the back of the corrugated metal. And just by lifting those up, I can pull the sign away from the metal. Cause I'm not going for like a farmhousey look. So I don't really feel the corrugated metal. And so now when we take this, it's kind of giving me more of the welcome um, winery look that I was looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these wires from the back. And then it's all nice and smooth and ready for us to use. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. I am going to show you what the initial design is going to look like once you put all those in. I just have to go back in and add our additional pieces um, that we did on our mock-up now because I already knew that was what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go through and take those last three pieces out and I'm going to sneak in here and add that right inside those last sections. So just always trying to work out my pipe cleaner. And I am not using the inside six for this design, so I'm going to trim those off. We're gonna tuck that edge back under, and we're not gonna fluff that one out yet because I wanna get this one in first. So I'm going to grab this one off my frame, place that one right on the inside. Nice two twists. Move that off to the side because we've got to squeeze in this last little piece. And then we shall be good to go. Just pulling out all the ribbons. Last piece of mesh. And so what do you guys think of the color combination for this particular wreath now that you're seeing it done completely? Okay, now I can fluff that middle section that we just put in, which is just take the adjoining mesh that was right next to it. And I'm going to fluff that up. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the ribbon to those two outside pieces. So I'm always trying to make sure I have really great coverage between the two. And so we need the winery ribbon next. And then our Swiss dot. This way it'll move us through the tutorial quicker. And that's already fluffed. 
we'll grab the last ribbon here, tuck that inside, and put in our winery ribbon, just like so. And as you can see, I've left all my pipe cleaners on because I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. I just need to see how that's going to look. Actually, I have the loop a little too big on this one. So let me go back. There we go. Sometimes you can have the, um, the loops a little too large and then your tails wind up short. So I want my inch and a half tails to meet where my um, two and a half inch ribbon ends so that you have that full look. Okay. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Cheryl. The sign came from Craft Outlet and we've modified it just a little bit. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the bow for this. So we're getting our bow dabra out. Okay, we are going to do the green down first because it's going to sit on that natural beige um, method or the mesh. So we want to dovetail all of our ends. So we're just going to bring our wired edges together. We're going to cut from the wired point or the folded side down to that wired point to give us a nice clean dovetail or ducktail. And we're going to go 10 inches in right here and we're going to twist. So even though this ribbon doesn't necessarily have a wrong side and a right side, we still go through the methods anyway because that's how you develop your habits. So we're gonna go ahead and twist, and I wanna make sure that my loop size is five and a half inches from here, where I have it lined up on my 10. We're gonna do the other side, kind of gauge roughly where five and a half might be, but double check it, we're right on the money. And we're going to take that out to our 10 inches and dovetail this. There we go. There's that one down. And now we're going to do that winery ribbon. So we're going to go ahead and pull this. Do a dovetail end on that. And this one's going to be nine and a half inches. So we want to measure that out, gather and pinch and twist. Go ahead and place that inside your bow dabra. This time we are going to measure five inches for our loop. So it's going to come in a half inch. Want to make sure that stops right on the five. Up and over. Kind of guesstimate a little bit, but then always double check. And we're right there. Nine and a half inches out. Another dovetail end. There's that one. Okay, now we have to play with the other four. So we do have the winery, which is going to be on the very top. We have our Swiss dot. We also have a um, that same moss green with tan gingham. And then we have this really nice um, kind of like cranberry or a Merlot color. So I'm just going to split these like that. And that's how the rest of our ribbon is going to flow into the Bodabra. So I'm going to take this gingham. We'll give it a fresh cut. We'll dovetail the end just like that. And this one's going to go nine inches. So straight up here. 
we're going to twist. And this one's going to be four and a half inches. So it's going to come another half inch down from our previous ribbon. So just pull it out and make sure you're right at your four and a half. Do the other side. We're right there. And then back out nine inches. And dovetail cut. This um, ribbon, the gingham, is from Craft Outlet. Um, the gingham or the Swiss dot will always be like my backup if I need a solid ribbon color, but I'm out. I will have a tendency of gravitating towards either of those first. Now this Merlot ribbon is from Shinoda, which is a design center wholesaler in um, California, Southern California. So um, I picked this up before I left. It's one of my favorite colors because it's so hard to find a really good Merlot color. So we're doing eight and a half inches. And then we're also going to do four and a half inches for this one. So because I've already had the gingham measured at four and a half, I can just place my finger in both those loops and pull because I know this one's already at four and a half inches. And then take that back out for eight and a half and dovetail. I like it because it's kind of a sheer ribbon, but then it's not a sheer ribbon. There we go. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Nancy. I love these colors, too. These are some of my favorite colors to create with the sage or bossy green and um, the Merlot instead of the purple. Although I would really love a good purple one too. Here's our Swiss dot. We're doing eight inches with a four inch loop. So just up and around, measure that out. Do four inches, same thing, up and around, remeasure four inches and then back out to eight. And you don't have to follow this recipe exact. You can vary it if, you know, you might want to just eyeball your tails and you're welcome to do that. There's nothing that says you have to have like perfect measurements all the way through. I just know the size that this one will yield so that's why I choose to go with this recipe. Okay, this last one's gonna be seven and a half inches, which is another one of my favorite ribbons I love. It has like the Merlot colored grapes and it has the green. So this top ribbon is gonna be three and a half inches. Is our loop size. And let's do that again. I don't think I'm right there just yet. And then back out seven and a half. Trim that up. And we're all set. I'm almost out of that ribbon. So that's kind of scary. I think when I bought it, it was to do a winery wreath for a client and it took me forever to try to find this ribbon again you know and sometimes you just can't which is why I generally don't remake existing designs because it's too hard to find exact matches so I've already bent my pipe cleaner into the shape I need it to be in as I'm picking up my ribbon from my Bodabra I'm compressing both sides and then I'm just gonna drop that right on the inside, hold at the bottom, and then just twist my stack. So much easier to do. Okay, let's fluff that. If 
I really am going to work on my fluff board this weekend. I don't really feel like weeding anymore. Okay, so this is a 24 by 24 inch or 24 by 24 by 1 inch thick uh, fluff board. It just has a 2 inch C hook in the center that you just screw into the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and grab using that C hook. I'm going to use it to hold my ribbon in place so it doesn't slide. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. So we're just going to separate loop from tail. Okay. Go back over to the bottom and we're going to go loop and tail. So they're completely opposite from one another. Then we're going to do opposite here. We're doing loop and then tail. So you can see how they're starting to fall into place. Back over to the other side. I'm doing a tail and my loop. So if we keep following the pattern, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have all green on one side and all Merlot color on the opposite. So at this point, I'm going to change it up and I'm going to pull green back over here and you're, you can totally do that. Just realize that once you do what you do on this side, you have to do on the opposite side. So I'm just bringing them opposite and now I'm pulling that Merlot right where the green is, the solid green. Okay, there is my loop, there's my tail, and now I'm gonna change back. I'm gonna do the green over here, okay, and green back over here. And then I'm gonna pull my Merlot or the Great Bridman back over here, opposite side, and then opposite sides. This way I have all my tails confined to this area and now we're ready to fluff. So we're just gonna take the top two loops, we're gonna lift and pull. Just get your fingers inside them and lift them, round out your ribbon. Then grab your next two and decide, hey, where do you want that to fall? You know, do you want the green to fall in between? Um, or do you want the Merlot color? You decide and then just move your loops wherever you want them to be. So I'm kind of going Merlot on the outside. And then at the very bottom, same thing. Decide where you want those to fall, but you're gonna really need to put all of your fingers in there to get those fluffed up because they're so much whiter. So just kind of play with your design see where you want everything to go and then to put the curl back in your ribbon just run those through your fingers and you'll put the, the curl back inside just like that and we have a beautiful um, bow all set to go right on top of our wreath. Okay, I'm going to just pop this off, move our fluff board out of the way, and bring our wreath over. And we're going to prep our sign. So I guess I needed to not move this completely over. I'm just going to attach my sign with um, floral wire. So we're just gonna take our metal hole punch and I'm just gonna punch a hole right in the side, right in here. Before I do that, I want to add a business card to the back because I've had so many people asked me, can you please put your business card on the back this way? I know where I got my wreath from. Should I want to order something different? So making sure everything is lining up. Just glue that right on. 
so they can reach out or tell their friend. Okay, now we are going to grab some 22 gauge floral wire because this works perfectly considering that we're going through a jute mesh which is always really hard to work through layers with a pipe cleaner but you can use a pipe cleaner as well so we're just going to go right in we're going to even that up so we have equal amounts and I'm going to build right over my hole so I'm just going to twist right over the hole just like that I'm going to go ahead and make sure that end is really taken down right through this side make sure it's even right over the hole Oop. okay just like that and then we're going to go ahead and bring our wreath over and we're going to go ahead now and add our sign kind of want it off to the side and then I'm going to take my ribbon kind of play with where I want my sign to wind up so something like that just like that so the bow was kind of up over this end and then I'm going to pivot my sign so I'm going to go ahead and put my sign in, which just so happens to be right over the uh, interior pipe cleaner where we removed it. So we want to make sure, because this sign is, um, I didn't measure it. When it was on the corrugated piece, it was 13 inches long. So this is probably a 12 inch sign now. I'm going to go ahead and do this to this side. Take it right down. I'm kind of keeping my bow there because I sometimes when you move your bow to put your sign in, then you kind of forget the angle that you wanted to keep your bow going at. Okay, so just like that, now we're going to come in and we're going to go ahead and add our bow. I need to grab my pipe cleaner. And I'm going to place this right over the top corner. This is that challenge of trying to work your pipe cleaner down through your deco mesh and you will always get it hung up on a piece of um, one of the fibers. It just never fails. That's exactly what's happening. So I'm trying to clear it. It's on, stuck on one little thread. Sometimes you just got to pull it, um, reposition it, and get it situated. Okay, let me reconfigure my bow. Just like so. Make sure all my ends are out and then I'm going to just lightly feather the edge around my sign so that we get rid of all those harsh lines. If your bow is floating higher than you'd like you might need to um, tuck some of your mesh back under. So this is what I'm working on right now. 
and I want just a couple pieces right here up and around just like that so that is the look so far I'm trying to get the glare off of that sign so when I hold it up um, we're situated right there okay now we have an awful lot of mesh here and an awful lot of mesh up here but this is where we're going to come in and we're going to embellish now so we have our grape leaves or our ivy that we used from Tuesday. And so that's what we're going to be adding in here. What you can get from Hobby Lobby, it just kind of comes in a big vine like this. So we're going to come in and we're going to add some ivy leaves. But I'm looking for a particular color that I would like. And let me look and see if this is the color I would like. So let me take these. I'm just going to kind of weave that in as like a little S pattern. So I'm just taking my vine and just creating a little S shape. And then this is going to get woven right inside my design, like so. Okay, so that that kind of feathers our sign as well. And we're gonna do the same up on top, but a much smaller piece. Okay, look at the piece I have. Taking the O hanger off. Okay. You guys know that sometimes I'll recreate whatever I need it to be. So I want that same kind of like a rustic red in here. I'm just going to kind of tuck these up and follow through on my little ruffles through there. And so now we've kind of cut that, um, the overly, uh, all that overly um, beige. Okay. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take my beige pipe cleaner and I'm going to secure this section of our greenery right in the center to our frame. So I'm trying to work that through. You could use floral wire. You could use binding wire. Matter of fact, I should have probably did binding wire. Let me do that. Um, and binding wire you can get, it just comes in a big spool like this. It's basically floral wire that's covered. And I'm just gonna take a piece off of this. I'm gonna go ahead and secure this right to my wreath base. You'll never even know that it's there, but that granary is not going to move once I get my wired end down through there. Oops, had it. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab both ends. Pull that down. Just a couple little twists. Right over. I'm always making sure it's on the frame. We'll go ahead and grab another piece. like this and I'm going to go ahead and secure this end down right in here and binding wire looks just so nice 
and you can get a giant spool of it at Amazon. I'll post the affiliate links there. So you can order this. Binding wire is like such a lifesaver because then I don't have to worry about glue. And you know how glue, depending upon the weather, it could let go. So now we've got those in place. Let's go ahead and get the top one secure. I'm gonna do the exact same thing right over the stem. There we go. It's already through. Always trying to make sure that I keep the, the frame covered if I can. Bring that right down. Okay, those are nice and secured. So now we've got our grape leaves in here or ivy, but it's basically the same as your grape leaves. And so now we're gonna come in and we're gonna embellish it a little bit with some grapes. So your grapes you can find at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, uh, I'm trying to think, Amazon, believe it or not. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna add in some nice grapes, probably right about there. Um, let's see, we're going to bring in some Merlot color, probably right in here. So we have like that purpley color. Um, I might put green here and then I might put the, the purple. We'll see. Let's look at the green. Well, let's see, do we want the green? The green maybe might go up underneath our bow a bit. Now let's see if we have another purple color we can squeeze in. Maybe we'll go with a smaller green. Like I'm thinking like that. That and then let me look. Maybe kind of a Merlot y color. Maybe something like that. That's kind of where I'm thinking. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and just remove my tag because these particular grapes have a, um, a loop in them. That makes it really super simple to hang them. So I'm just going to go right on the inside with my binding wire, just like that. And then I'm going to take that right down to my frame. There's one. There's the other. We're going to go ahead and make sure that stays in nice and tight that nice purple color. Okay, that's in. We're gonna do the same on this side. We've got our perfect hook. Let's go ahead and get this one tucked in. Have it hang a little lower. So right here on top. And then we're going to go ahead and get that secured in to our frame. Trying to get that in. There we go. Oh, I had it. There we go. There's that side. And then. I can hear it, I just can't feel it. I got one side to go in perfect, 
And then, then of course this one just wants to be challenging and difficult. And so all it wants to do is push up. So that just tells me that there's probably um, an overly big piece. There we go, got it. Of, um, so now we'll just kind of push this back up, tuck it in place. So that won't come off. And then we'll go ahead and do the same with our green. Since we have all the colors represented here, we have the green, we have the Merlot, we have the dark purple, like the Concord grapes. Go ahead and do this one since it hangs a little differently. We want to pull this one way up into the design. So there's one side. And here's the other. I'm just going to take and lift those and then really make sure that they're down in that wreath. Really snug. Isn't that pretty, Carol? The grape ribbon is just amazing. Okay, and then I'm going to tuck these up underneath our ribbon so that we have like the Merlot up under here. We don't need to, but I like to always add just a bunch under the bow so that it's kind of like flowing out of the bow. Same thing, go through the loop in the top. I'm gonna go ahead and go way up underneath my bow. Get that secured into the frame. There's one side. I'm trying to get the end. And then just feed it up where you want it to go. Okay. hanging out the side and now we're going to come in and we're going to add just a touch of raffia so I wasn't really sure where I wanted to add the raffia I didn't know if I wanted to put it under the green or under the merlot color so we can kind of look at that and decide hmm where would we like it to go and I want it to look you'll notice that some of your raffia looks too perfect I want it to be kind of stringy when it goes on here. So I am actually going to two, kind of hang it down. Kind of like it under the mer under the grape ribbon, believe it or not. Let's go ahead and try it there. And if I absolutely hate it, we can switch it out. And so I want these to be longer. I want them to hang down. So just like that, I want them to be wispy. And I kind of like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove my pipe cleaner. Tuck it around the back. And then I'm going to have these like little wispy pieces of raffia through the design. I've seen this on a wreath before. It was more of a natural wreath and I liked the look. And so I was like, ooh, I really want to put that in with the design. I'm going to pull out my more rustic raffia. These are like the pieces that I collect that are a little bit more wispy. So I'm gonna go in right here. Go ahead and cut that back. 
and I'm just cutting my pipe cleaner right at the base where I pull it. That was just a tad too long, but I don't want them to all be the same length either. So I want them to just kind of have a little bit of a rustic look to that. See, I'm trying to make sure that I'm kind of getting it in the center. This one's actually right over, isn't it? I did that one. Oh, that's why it's throwing me off. I have a pipe cleaner there. So over there. Let's go all the way around. I'm gonna remove these ones. Under. Um, that one seems a little long. So let's add another piece, but more stringy. I want it more stringy looking. So I'm going to tuck this in, right, and all I'm doing is adding it to the pipe cleaner under the ribbon. Then just remove the excess and then wrap it, the, the, the remainder part of your um, pipe cleaner behind. I like that. Let's go up. And around same thing look for more see not such a solid piece like I want more of the messy raffia because I want to have that look, that rustic look. Through the design. Now you might not like it, but I, I do. So I want it to just be long. So I'm just taking it away pipe cleaners from the green and then I'm adding the little wispies so that that's all going to kind of hang through the design. What do you think? It's kind of weird. Trying to get them to where it's even. Oop, that one is way too long. So I'm going to use this one right by our grapes. that I'm trying to pull out this one piece I didn't really care for okay our last piece and what you can do sometimes with those perfect pieces is just split them 
and just kind of put those into a little less than perfect form. This way it kind of looks more vineyard looking, I guess. Need to remove this pipe cleaner. Tuck this one in. There's our bow. Here's our wispy pieces. Let's make sure. I just kind of have that all out away. There we go. I think we've got it. Let's put a little bit of a baby have these little pieces. So sometimes it's great when your um, grapes are a little too long. You can kind of come in and just add little touches to the top. So I have it like that. We could add the green. The purple I have are too big. Those are like a darker Merlot. Here's a little baby Merlot. Thinking the darker color for our center of our bow, just like that. Um, and I think I have some baby right vine. We can tuck this in just like that. I'm trying to keep it based on the same way that our grapes are falling. Kind of liked it that way though. So let's go ahead and fix those. So we have our glue gun set. I'm just going to drop that right inside my bow. I'm going to go in and add this to my grapes. Tuck those in. And I think we're done. This is our design. Oh, Belinda. Yeah, it's okay. She's like, I'll have to watch you on replay since I'm late. So we just kind of like excelled through this a little quicker. Um, I kind of just um, had most of the wreath pre-built um, when we were doing the design portion of it. So what do you guys think so far? Do you think it turned out okay? I think we um, we hit everything really, really well. These will fall a little bit further to the bottom, but let's see what it looks like on the door. So I'm gonna tilt you up. Hang tight just for one second. I think we're good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one down. And I think it's gonna look better. I think it'll look better on black rather than white. Let's look. So it's very heavy because we have added all of our grape vines and are not grape vines, but our grapes to this design. Let's get it where it should be hanging correctly. There we go. Just like so. We'll position our welcome a little differently. So that's it on the white door. And if these are a little too long, you can trim them back a bit. But I kind of like that little rustic flair. But I think it'll look better on the black door. So that's it on white. Let me show you what it looks like on black, though. So I'm going to take this off. Just making sure my thing is prepped. There we go. Okay. I think.
think it'll look better on black, right? Okay. So, see how it pops on the black better? Um, let me show you what it looks like. So, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna try to take my head off a little bit. So I like it on the black better than on the white. Ah, oh, Cheryl says, I made a wine one on a grapevine wreath, embellished it with glass grapes and leaves and added small silver wine glasses. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so this is available for sale. It's the only one I'm making for 2023. So this is a gorgeous wreath, especially if you have that um, Tuscan look to your front door. You have a really nice, um, you know, that's the kind of theme to your house. So this is available on my website. Let me go ahead and put it here for people who are going to catch this on a replay, catscreationsandmore.com. Also, while you're there, you can pick up a free bow recipe. You can also um, join the private group. So our private group, we've been working on back to basic techniques since January. And so we meet every Monday and Tuesday and do additional designs. Plus, they get a supply list for like this wreath here. So if they wanted to replicate it, they just print it out and go shopping. So I hope you guys like this design. If you're wanting to pick that up, like I said, go to the website, catscreationsandmore.com. Other than that, I am finished. And so I hope you have an amazing weekend. And I will talk to you guys next week for another everyday design. Bye for now, everyone.